Hello, Oscillator Sync here. A few days ago, I posted this jam. So what I was trying to do with this jam is kind of create kind of a sort of a techno baseline drone plus drum machine kind of patch, which is what we've got set up here. I, I asked in the, uh, in the description of the video would people like to learn more about the patch and on uh, Facebook and on YouTube, I had enough people say that they were interested that I thought, well, I'll, I'll make this uh, video um, just explaining what this patch is doing because uh, there's quite a lot of cables here. Um, what I want to make really clear to begin with is that I am in no way saying that the way I've implemented this in this case is necessarily the best way of doing it. This came out of a lot of experimentation in between making other videos essentially and um, certainly there are some things in here which in retrospect I could probably do differently. Indeed there was at least one patch um, in here that was completely redundant actually uh, which I removed before I started the video because there was I was embarrassed basically. I'm hiding that from you. Um, right, so let's actually talk about the patch. So the first thing to mention before we look at anything else is uh, this knob here, which is the uh, attenuator to amp knob. So what this means is that the amp on the synth is actually wide open. This is, for all intents and purposes, a drone patch. Actually, there is always sound coming through the synth as long as one of the sliders on the mixer is up. Um, it doesn't necessarily sound like that because I'm doing other things to change the uh, envelope, the shape, the loudness, the hearability <laughs> of, of the sounds. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a, I'm cheating, essentially. The other thing is that I've got the brute factor turned up a little bit because it just dirtied things up in a way that I found quite uh, appealing, kind of blended everything together a bit more, um, made them interact with each other in, in interesting ways. Okay, um, right. I, I guess the the place to start really is with the kick drum. The kick drum is coming from Oscillator Two here. And if I turn this up, if you listen really carefully, you might hear a rumble and some clicks, um, but not much else. And the reason for that is that the tuning is uh, super low, basically almost subsonic, not quite, um, but almost there. The range on VCO Two is massive on this synth um, and I've got it turned right the way down and the reason that you can hear uh, the kick drum is because I'm altering its pitch not its volume. So uh, let's take a look at how we're doing that. So um, if we look on the patch bay uh, VCO2 its pitch input is coming from actually the ADSR. Okay, so that's this envelope here, and what I've got to find here is kind of a fairly standard kick drum um, pitch envelope, which is that it's an instant onset attack, a quick decay, fairly low sustain, uh, and a, in this case, a short release, but we'll come back to release, because that's interesting, um, at least I think it's interesting. Uh, so this envelope has been triggered actually from uh, this here, the mod 2 track, so that's this track here. Now these two um, mod tracks on the sequencer can be set to do a ton of different things. Uh, I can't wait to do more videos on how just ridiculously good and flexible and interesting the sequencer is on, on this, like it, it like uh, yeah, it, suffice to say, it's really cool. Um, but we'll come back to that in more detail another day. So this um, here is currently set to send out gates. And if we look here, um, this is essentially our kick drum pattern. If we play it, you can hear our kick drum happening. Now, what's interesting about um, having this seem to track set up as gates is that each of these um, steps can be can be set to have different gate percentages so how long the, the gate signal has been sent so whether or not it's just a single pulse if it was very very low or whether it actually holds the gate open for the entirety of the uh, the step now what that allows me to do is alter the shape of the um, the kick drum a little bit by playing with the release in particular. Um, so check this out. I'm going to do this in the jam. Can 
you hear there that we're getting different pitches, different lengths happening. Now what's interesting is that the uh, steps which have the long ones, find one, this thing's a long one, doom, yeah, so this is a, a longer um, one here, and if we have a look here, the gate is set super low. So why is it that this is making us hear a longer kick drum? Well, what we need to remember about an ADSR uh, envelope is that the release stage happens as soon as the note stops playing, so essentially when the gate stops. So when we have a longer gate, um, we have enough time for this to attack up to full and then quickly to K back down and then to the sustain level and then release. If we have a very short gate, we don't have a chance for the decay to actually finish. Instead, we go up really quickly, and then before the decay can even get all the way, we've turned the gate off and we've switched to our long, languid release, and that's where we get these longer notes. So actually, a shorter gate is leading to a longer kick drum sound. Neat, I think neat implementation of being able to do that. In the middle, we just kind of get sort of the body. Uh, up at the top, it's more sort of pitched. Uh, so that's the kick drum sound. Um, and I'll stop it for a second. Uh, the snare uh, is coming from, uh, essentially from the noise. But if we turn the uh, noise all the way up, we just kind of get this, well, we just get noise on the whole time, which is not what we want. It's not um, a snare drum sound. What we want to do is basically have this sort of chup, chup, chup. We want to be flicking that fader really, really quickly. Unfortunately, there's no way to CV the sliders on the mixer. These are just straight knobs. They're not um, control voltage controlled. So how can we um, actually get snappy um, snare drum sounds, which, spoiler alert, are here. Okay. So we know they're coming in on, on the external input there. So let's trace that backwards. So we've got the external input here, and that is coming from the output of the VCA. VCA, Voltage Controlled Amplifier, it's a way that we can have control over the amplification of a signal. The input of the VCA is coming from the noise. So the noise is coming into the VCA, it's going out of the VCA into the external uh, uh, input here. Now what is controlling that VCA is, is the uh, sequencer track two. So as I mentioned before, these two signature tracks are highly configurable in terms of what they can do. So this one was acting as a gate. The one that is controlling the VCA for the snare is acting as an envelope. So what you've essentially got on each of these steps is a simple AD envelope being fired. Instant uh, attack, and then the decay is being defined by uh, the knobs here. So we've got some short ones here, over here somewhere. I think we've got, that one's nearly a second long, so that's quite a long one. That's long-ish, and then short again. And what we get then is this kind of snare and hi-hat pattern. So with the kick. And of course you can play this by turning stuff on and off. So that kind of leaves the bass drone sound which is coming from the rest of the uh, oscillator one. Uh, so uh, if we just bring one of these up, uh, I guess this one. So there's a couple of things happening here. Pitch is being controlled by the pitch as normal. The gate is being, well, the gate is essentially being ignored because the uh, amp is already open. Now, if we have a look on the patch by here, the gate has been sent into the trigger of the AD envelope. And the output of the AD envelope, because it's not controlling the amp at the moment, is going to the FM input on here, which is what it's giving. If we turn this down. Yeah, we've just got this kind of straight drone. Whereas with it up, we've kind of got this attack, which we can control with the AD envelope. So that kind of leaves us with the other modulation sources, which are mainly our LFOs here. They're both set to sample and hold, and they're being sent to various different places, some of them where they are normaled normally. So we've got um, LFO1 is controlling the uh, 
resonance mod, just where I can always kind of hear this in the background. Very, very, very quiet. Um, LFO one is also being sent into the metal mod control of the uh, triangle wave, which is why you're hearing this kind of sound there. Uh, the other thing that we've mostly got going on here is uh, LFO two is going into the attenuator one, which is this knob here, which by default will be set sent to the cutoff. So what that's doing is when I turn this knob off, it's adding a um, a, a, a sample and hold uh, LFO to what's already set on the cutoff. So that's quite cool because uh, from a performance standpoint, if we set things going, we can kind of use it to do kind of rolls almost. I'll, I'll show you in context, it's easier to hear than explain probably. you get this big sort of stepped, um, it's synced uh, uh, modulation happening. So you can kind of use that to create variations. I think that covers all of the the patch points. The, the, the other thing to maybe talk about quickly is the performance aspect of it, which is just all playing the sequencer in. Uh, as kind of the performance was going, the Arturi have really got sequences for jamming sort of down to a T. You know, I am, as you've probably noticed on the channel recently anyway, a, a big Electron fanboy in terms of their sequences. Um, but I think that the Arturia sequences are really, really great for on the fly composing on the fly jamming putting stuff together and tweaking it as you go and when you have um, a sequencer that allows you to be so flexible on these two tracks here that's that's really quite a, a, a big deal with this sequencer to allow you to kind of put those jams together in real time I think that should be uh, absolutely commended and highlighted anyway guys I hope that was uh, interesting and useful for those of you who were interested in taking a look at the patch and, and hopefully those who who didn't know you were interested in looking at the patch but can find that interesting anyway um i will be featuring the mini brutes um lots more on the on the channel in the upcoming weeks and months i think it is a very interesting instrument that is worth diving into in some detail um and that's not interesting in a, in a derogatory way that is genuinely i think it is a very interesting um machine that allows you much more flexibility than even someone who kind of understood the patch bay ahead of time uh, um, maybe would think because of the sequencer that it is paired to that's such a big deal anyway guys uh, yeah, thank you for watching um, if you did enjoy the video please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, and other than that thank you so much for joining me I will see you again soon bye bye take care